We now get into our education system that is uh, within the 21st century and it is actually imperative to build leadership initiatives that seek to bridge the gap between schools and communities and to discuss more and uh, this topic is uh, Charlene Prasen Shikomo, a speaker, an author, a mentor, an entrepreneur as well who has done ver various executive workshops with governments across Africa and uh, he's uh, had the privilege to travel uh, to countries like South Africa Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, USA, and the UK. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning to you. I will viewers. say you're very well traveled for a 24 <laughs> year old. <laughs> yeah, for a 24 year old. That's very true. <laughs> uh, let's come back to your work. I mean, you've been known to travel across the continent of Africa, yeah. talking about education and bridging that into communities. Walk us through the journey, and how did that spike and ignite an interest in you? Thank you very much for having me, first of all. Uh, first of all, I think I was out of school between 2007 and 2011. And uh, during that time, it was, you know, that time when you're not going to school, you lose your dreams and so forth. And you start feeling like you are not actually good enough. But then in 2011, I was brought back to school. And fast forward, uh, when I wrote my O-level exams, I managed to get like seven A's and two B's. And mm -hmm. when I wrote my A-level exams, I managed to get 20 points. But wow. during that time, you know, as a child, you have been out of school for a very long time. And then now you are within school and you are at the top in terms of performance. I had this question in my mind, what is the connection between what I'm learning in class and the challenges in the community I had spent most of my time in? And most of the time I realized that in school I was getting a certificate, but the community cares much about the skill that you have because a certificate without a skill is like an icing on a cake. You don't eat it unless you want to get sick. Um, I realized that the community is not looking for people who are just looking for jobs, but the community is looking for people who actually have an ability to create jobs. I'm talking about entrepreneurship. I realized that in the community, it's not just about what you know, but it's also about who you know and who knows you in terms of networking and partnership. So during that time, I decided to create a foundation called the Juice Leadership Initiative, which mm -hmm. seeks to is a generation of highly impactful entrepreneurial leaders by actually bridging the gap between school and community. So what we are doing with the Juice Leadership Initiative is that we are beginning to speak to high school students and university students, helping yeah. them in their transition from actually, you know, the school into the community by saying, your certificate is not enough add a skill. A job seeking mentality is not enough. Add a job creation mind mindset. Points are not enough. You also have to add a purpose. Mm -hmm. So um, in your mind, how do you reimagine our education system in yeah. Zimbabwe? And of course, uh, how do you relate that to our current introduction of Education 5.0? First of all, I think I must applaud the government of Zimbabwe for coming with Education 5.0 for because this is something that we need. Because Zimbabwe, just like other African countries, we are coming from a time where we have been colonized. And you and I would know that one of the reasons why Zimbabwe, just like other African countries, was colonized was the desire for raw materials and the desire for cheap labor. So the pedagogy that was used during the colonization time, it was a pedagogy to make Africans job seekers and not job creators. So when Zimbabwe got its independence in 1980, we are now masters of our destiny and part of it is the education that we now need to offer to our people the education that we now need to give to our people should not just be an education of creating job master for the masters because mm -hmm. we are now the job creators we are now the masters of our own destiny so there's, there's need for a shift in terms of how we learn and um, if you notice that during that time uh, most of the things that we see that is that education uh, that people were getting during the colonial era was more of major driven where students were treated as empty buckets that need to be filled, not yeah. necessarily as potentials or fires that needs to be ignited. So when we look at Zimbabwe, we need also a shift of our education from a colonial mindset to actually a belief that we are now moving from the liberation promise to the transformation promise. And part of that is that we need now to reimagine our education to make sure that we ask ourselves, what are the opportunities that are in Zimbabwe? How can our young people make use of the opportunities that we have? And we say, what type of education do they need to be mm -hmm. able to make use of the opportunities that they have? So that's number one in terms of a shift from you know colonial education to, colon to education of the free. And then number two, what I think is we need to move from major driven education to mission driven education where unlike going to a university to just pick a program that you have to do we are now actually need to start asking our students 
of the challenges that you see in Zimbabwe, of the opportunities that you see in Zimbabwe, what is it that you want to do for your nation? And then mm. in schools, we yeah. actually start molding. For example, people would say, I want to transform the health sector of Zimbabwe. I want to transform the entrepreneurial sector of Zimbabwe, the tourism sector, the agricultural sector. And then as a school, we ask ourselves, as University of Zimbabwe, as MSU, as Great Zimbabwe, as, as a high school, what can we do to not just load the students with information, but actually help them to take notice of these opportunities that are around them. I think that will lead us to the, uh, you know, the vision of the government that we have for 2030, and I think our students will be the key drivers of economic development. Mm -hmm. you, you actually uh, you know, touched on what was going to be my next <laughs> question because you're such a good orator. Thank you so uh, much. But before we let you go, uh, what, what advice do you have for young people who are currently in school, yeah. uh, from primary level to tertiary institutions? Yeah. What are some of the things that they need to open their eyes to um, and especially talking to our teacher institution students, yeah. what do they need to open their eyes to get into the world of entrepreneurship and job seeking? I think the first thing is an understanding that schools are not islands to themselves. They don't exist in isolation from the community that we live in. So it is very important for the students when they find themselves in classes, when they find themselves learning, to understand that whatever they are learning is not just useful in the four corners of the classroom, but they need to be in touch with what is happening in our communities so that they don't feed themselves with the false reality that, for example, we are great, we are this and that, without an understanding of what Zimbabwean society is looking for. So it is very important for students that are in universities that they need to be doing internships in communities, volunteering with communities, not just waiting for that attachment period, mm -hmm. but take it as a personal part of personal development to go into the community to look at what are the challenges. So that is number one. And then number two, I would love to see students not just saying I'm studying law or not just saying I'm studying medicine or not just saying I'm studying you know anthropology or I'm studying all these things, but I want them to start having a mission, and then study what you are studying for the sake of achieving that particular mission. That way you will see your education becoming more sensible, because people don't hire you for just the degree that you have, but the value you bring to the marketplace. Yeah. And that value can be found when a person has a mission. Just now, to give you an example, I'm working with an organization called Ashoka. It's a global institution where I work as a global consultant, and it's building a generation of social entrepreneurs. And the reason why I was employed, I was employed a day after my graduation, because they liked my project, which was talking about bridging the gap between you know, school and communities. And because of that, I managed to get the opportunity, not just because of the degree that I have. So my parting words to the students or a word of advice would be, you are not an empty bucket that needs to be filled. You are a fire that needs to be ignited. Education comes from two Latin words, educere and educare. Bring out the inner demons of the person and mold them. And if you do that, Zimbabwe will be the best place for you. Africa will be the best place. And the world, of course, will not resist a person of value. Thank you so much for coming on the show and for adding value to the young ones and, of course, for being such a good orator. Thank you very uh, May much. you continue doing the great work that you're doing. So that was uh, Charlene Chikomo here uh, to talk us uh, uh, through the journey of self-discovery uh, through education and, of course, bridging into us being a fitting candidate in the community and, of course, in the business world. We now cross back over uh, to our Montreux studios where Becky Temba Sawanda is in Stand by with more updates. Good morning, Becky Timber. Thank you to Michelle. Actually, thank you to Nicole.